Hello Rammers and Happy New Year! When I said I would do a video on emulation on Linux, I actually had no idea how I was going to do it. Not being familiar with Linux as an OS, I was worried about having to install and configure Linux and then find emulators to run on it. Thankfully, someone else has done all that for us in the form of Batocera, a Linux-based OS dedicated to emulation. So, how do you do it? Well, it's actually more straightforward than I imagined. You simply download the latest Batocera release and then use Raspberry Pi Imager to burn it to a compatible disk. I'm using this old 256GB MSATA USB drive. I'd been using this as extended storage for a PS4 and it was already formatted as XFAT. Then you plug it into the machine you want to run it from and boot it up as you would any external drive. As the only OS in the system, it auto-booted every time. A quick look at the system specs and they're unchanged from the last time we looked at emulation. We're using the AMD R5430 2GB GPU and seeing if a lightweight Linux OS will let us push things a little further. We'll be revisiting my old console favourites, but first let's take a look at Batasera itself. Once Batasera is booted, you'll have a screen like this, where you can scroll through the emulators. They only show up once you have compatible ROMs stored in the ROM folders. A controller worked best for me, and once you've selected your emulator, your games will be displayed in a sub-menu, and you can boot them up. As I'm inexperienced with Batasera, I couldn't always find a way to show the FPS, and I've left most settings on auto, so we can't make a direct comparison to emulation on Windows. I'm not even exactly sure what emulator is in use for each console, and sound hasn't come through on the recordings, as it was playing through the PC's internal speaker and not going out via the HDMI. So, let's get on with the games! Rare's classic GoldenEye first, and I was caught out by the control scheme again. It does feel really awkward going back, and yet, this was revolutionary in 1997. All N64 games were rendered at 1080p, and it played just fine on Batacera. Wipeout 64, and please excuse my terrible driving. I do have a driving license, although if they saw this, they'd probably take it away. Spitting the critics in 1998, it's more of a mashup of the PlayStation Wipeout games than a dedicated entry. Its main draw was four-player split-screen racing, and there's no issues here in single-player mode. Our final N64 title is Jet Force Gemini, a high-rated title and another one where the N64's analog controls don't map quite well to a modern controller. Apart from awkward controls, it seems that there are no issues running at 1080p on the R5430 in Batasera. On to the Dreamcast with launch title Sonic Adventure, and we're running with no enhancements, everything is native, and we're getting a solid 30 frames per second. Graphically, this was beyond what most home computers could manage in 1998. Soul Calibur was another Dreamcast launch title, and it's one of my favourite beat-em-ups. And here it is, running as nature intended at 60 frames per second. At the time, Edge said this was graphically superior to Sonic Adventure. Batacera uses PCSX2 for PlayStation 2 emulation, and I managed to break it, turning some settings on so it no longer booted games, and I had to delete the config file. After that, some things didn't work quite right. I couldn't seem to push the settings as high as the PC version before titles were not enjoyable to play anymore. Shadow of the Colossus has this weird feel like it's running through treacle, even though the frame counter in the top right, V, says we're getting between 30 to 60 FPS. Still, I could manage the first boss okay, so I guess it's playable. No issues with the first post-modern video game, Metal Gear Solid 2 on Batasera. We're running at a near constant 50 frames per second. A nice experience, if you can get your head round the plot. This is Rhodes! 
Nah, that doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? Is this the best God of War game? Because I think it might be. And you can enjoy it on Batasera with the R5 430 just fine at around 35 to 45 frames per second. Batasera uses the Dolphin emulator for GameCube and Super Mario Sunshine runs at 30 frames per second at a render resolution of 720p. Turning anything else on resulted in stutter and slowdown, but it looks great and I'd happily play through it like this. One of my favourite GameCube games, Metroid Prime 2, runs well with a frame rate between 30 and 60 frames per second. A good enough experience to enjoy this great title. The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess is still a Zelda game I haven't finished. Shame on me. But Batasera and the R5430 gives us a good 30 frames per second experience in this title. Running at the same 720p resolution as the GameCube games, Super Mario Galaxy for the Wii runs at about 40 frames per second. Which is good, but I don't know about you guys, but does it seem a tad slow? For Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker on the PSP, I was amazed at how much I could increase the quality. We went from this... to this. Does it look better than Metal Gear Solid 2? I think it might. On to the great PS3. And it was great. It just took far too long to find its greatness. Batasera uses RPCS3 and we're running Demon Souls. This is better. Of course, this is a subjective opinion, but I am sure this is running much better than it did on the Windows version. Of course, that was a year ago. RPCS3 could have had multiple improvements since then, but in comparison, this is a far superior experience. Initially, I found Batasira difficult to use, and I struggled to get the emulators working. But once I'd done some reading and became more familiar with it as a system, I've grown to like it. I can see this on a low-profile system such as my Fujitsu, or even a mini PC sitting under a TV in a living area, ready to run old favourites. And it'll do a great job. The user interface works well with a controller, and once set up, you really can just pick it up and play. The i5-6500 seems to be enough for now, but I think we need a little more power in the GPU department, as the R5-430 struggled a bit. So we may take another look at Batasera in the future with a different, more powerful GPU. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time, Rammers.